podcast we are live it is episode 153 of used to be friday night fire now it's monday night fire please excuse me for being late i have a family emergency going on that i need you guys all to pray about just be praying for my family maybe i'll post something about it soon right now it's just kind of private so if i end up jumping off the stream i'm on the wrong screen already here we go if i end up jumping off the stream midstream or in a few minutes then i will reschedule this broadcast we're gonna go as long as we can hopefully we can get the whole broadcast done but if this does uh, escalate, then I'm going to need to get off the stream randomly and go, go take care of this. And I'll be back this week with the stream. Tomorrow's stream is still on with Bill Weez. You do not want to miss tomorrow's stream. Let me just tell you guys this. Tomorrow's stream, get every single unbeliever you know, unbeliever, believer, whoever you know, get them on tomorrow's stream. It's going to be an incredible stream that you don't want to miss with Bill Weez's testimony of him going to hell for 23 minutes and then answering some frequently asked questions. So be praying for my family. Tomorrow's stream is going to be amazing. We're going to go tonight, see how far we can go. If I have to get off because of something that's come up, then I will, I'll reschedule the stream and we will, um, we'll get back. Oh, you came in half sentence. No, it's not canceled today, but if something comes up, something did come up in my family and if it progresses, I'm going to be getting off the stream to take care of it and I'll reschedule this stream. But as of right now, we're going for it guys. Share the broadcast, like the broadcast tomorrow night. We're going to be live with Bill Weez. This is going to be an amazing broadcast tonight. I believe the Holy Spirit's going to have his way. Father, we just pray, Lord, that you would have your way. You would touch every single person listening. And I pray tonight, Holy Spirit, that you would baptize people. Father, we pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. I pray those tonight, Lord, that have never prayed in tongues, never spoken tongues. I pray tonight they would in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, we're not only going to be teaching about speaking in tongues and the Holy Spirit, but at the end, we're going to spend five, ten minutes praying in tongues, praying for you guys. And if you've never gotten tongues before, you've never prayed in tongues, I believe it's for everybody. I believe God wants to give it to you, and I'm going to show you in Scripture. So we're going to talk about tongues. We're going to talk about some objections to tongues. We're going to watch a video about tongues. That's very, very good. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit. So we have a lot to cover. The first thing I do want to say as we go into this tonight is the Holy Spirit is a person. So we're not talking about some mystical, magical force, some blue flame. We are talking about a person whose name is holy. Spirit is his definition, or ghost, holy ghost. Ghost means spirit, is his definition, but holy is his name. And we have to stop treating the Holy Spirit like he's not a person. We have to stop treating him like he's just someone that does stuff for us. We have to stop treating him like he's just another part of God that's just randomly there doing miracles. The Holy Spirit is God, fully God, and the Holy Spirit is a person that lives on the inside of us. Theologically, Jesus lives in us through the person of the Holy Spirit. And so we need to become best friends with the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit to be my best friend. I don't want there to be anyone in my life that is more important. So if you think of all the important people in your life right now as we start, you need to have the Holy Spirit as number one. If he's not number one in your life, then I question if you even have the Holy Spirit. Jesus said you're either for me or you're against me. Guys, this is all about being all the way in for God or being all the way out. So we have to be 100% in. There's no such thing as being 99.9% .9 in. There's no such thing as being 50% in. There's no such thing as like, I'm a halfway in. I just go on Sunday for 90 minutes. That doesn't exist in the Bible. Jesus bid men to forsake everything and follow him. So Holy Spirit, we need you tonight. We need you in this broadcast. Again, he's a person. He's not an it. He's not like a, oh, just, he's, he really has become in the church the forgotten God. A lot of pastors don't even talk about the Holy Spirit. They don't function in the power of the Holy Spirit. And guys, everything we do is by the power of the Holy Spirit. When we're praying for the sick, when we're casting out demons, Jesus said it's by the finger of God, it's by the Holy Spirit that we cast out demons. When we are prophesying, it's by the Holy Spirit. When we're getting words of knowledge, it's the person of the Holy Spirit giving us these. So he has to become our best friend. He has a will and a personality. And just like a person can be offended or made mad or angry or quenched or grieved, so can the Holy Spirit. And I want to talk to you about that because I think some of us in our life don't realize why the Holy Spirit's not moving. It's possible that you're grieving him. It's possible that you've broken his heart. And so tonight, we, we're going to repent of that. Holy Spirit, if I've offended you, Holy Spirit, if I've made you mad about something, if I've had an error in my life or there's sin in my life, you are holy. This is why David prayed, Lord, don't take your Holy Spirit from me when he sinned with Bathsheba. He recognized the Holy Spirit is holy 
And as I live unholy, an unholy lifestyle, I'm actually grieving the Holy Spirit. So John 15, 26, Jesus said, but when the helper comes, who is the Holy Spirit? Now notice he's not the doer, he's the helper. So he's going to help us. When we're praying in tongues, praying in the Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit praying out of us. I'm going to show you this in Scripture. So he's the helper. And Jesus said, whom I shall send you from the Father. So Jesus says in John 15, the Holy Spirit's with the Father, but Jesus says, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit from the Father, the Spirit of truth. And if you don't love truth, it's probably because you don't have the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and he, capital H-E, will testify of me. So the Holy Spirit will come from the Father, testify of Jesus. So we need the Holy Spirit. And now that the Holy Spirit's here, this was the promise of the Holy Spirit. But now we actually have him and we're able to have him live inside of us. He brings things to remembrance. He's there to help you. Some of us don't need help, which is why the Holy Spirit's not moving in our life. I don't know why the Holy Spirit's not moving. And I'm like, I know why you don't need him. If you don't put yourself in a place where you need the Holy Spirit, why would he show up? If you're not inviting the Holy Spirit into your day, why would the Holy Spirit show up? So I want to put myself in a position to do the impossible, create a vacuum that only the Holy Spirit can come and fill. So if I'm not stepping out in a miraculous way or supernatural way or making disciples or baptizing people or praying for the sick or laying hands on people, which I'm going to show you is biblical tonight, so they could receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't need the Holy Spirit if I'm not doing these things. So if I come and pray for you and biblically lay my hands on you so that you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I need the Holy Ghost to show up. Without the Holy Spirit, I have no power. Guys, I remind you, there is no power in the name of Isaiah. Isaiah has no power. Isaiah has no authority. Isaiah can't do anything for you. So what do I rely on? What do I lean on? The Holy Spirit. When I get up to preach, Holy Ghost, I need you to move. I can't do this without you. I can't live without you. Come on, somebody in the chat type what you can't do without the Holy Spirit. I can't be a good husband without the Holy Spirit. I can't be a good father without the Holy Spirit. I can't be a good pastor, a good preacher, a good evangelist, a good deliverance minister without the Holy Spirit. So you don't just need him for the supernatural. You need him for every moment of your life. Guys, if you knew me without the Holy Spirit, now I was an atheist, January 12th of 2011, the Holy Spirit encountered me. I got filled. I repented of my sin, got filled with the Holy Spirit, and my life forever changed. Now, this is a guy who was raised in church. I was raised in church at 16. I decided I'm going to be an atheist. And I never encountered the Holy Spirit, even though I was raised in church. And the defining moment that changed everything was when the Holy Spirit came upon me. And I believe tonight that's going to happen to some of you. The Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. Now, others have already been filled with the Holy Spirit once, but you can be filled again. The Bible says, do not be drunk on wine, which will ruin your life, but be filled with the, type it in the chat, the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to say that word a million times. So he's the most important person in my life. He's what changed everything that night. And the Holy Spirit came upon me. One of the first things that happened was I realized how unholy I was. I was convicted of my sin. Guys, sin that the day before I had no conviction about. I just felt this conviction. I felt this pain like, man, I've been living wrong. I've been cussing and drinking and sleeping around and partying. And I felt fine about it. And now that the Holy Spirit's in me, oh, it feels bad. I don't want to drink anymore. I don't want to smoke anymore. I don't want to sleep around. I don't want to look at pornography. I don't want to look at people like they're pieces of me. I don't want to be angry, bitter, racist. All the stuff I was, the Holy Spirit came in and changed everything and started making me like him. He was the helper. He helped me. Whatever you're going through tonight, the Holy Spirit can help you. I say, I'm struggling with this sin or this thing. Friend, the Holy Spirit can help you. Or maybe you say, I've never prayed in tongues. I've never spoken tongues. The Holy Spirit can help you tonight. So he's here. So we're not going to talk about him like he's not here among us. We're not going to talk about him like he's some study thing we study. We put him in a test tube or on a Petri dish. We're not here to study him. We're here to experience him. This is not a Bible study just about someone we know nothing about. We're not like the Pharisees. We want to actually know him. Jesus said, you think in the scripture you find life. You look to the scripture thinking in the scriptures you find life. But Jesus is like, I'm the one you're looking for. 
We don't fall in love with the book. We fall in love with the author of the book. The book points to the author. It's not Father, Son, and Holy Scripture. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, we, bring, we give you the glory and the praise. He gets all the praise and glory when people get healed, when people get delivered, when people get saved. We give the Holy Spirit. He's the one working on the earth. He changes everything. You can be in church. Please hear me tonight, chat. Share this broadcast your entire life and never encounter the Holy Spirit. You can be in church your entire life and never have an experience with the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to show you tonight that salvation, when you get the Holy Ghost at salvation, is different than being baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's a different event. We're going to see this in Scripture tonight, okay? So the Holy Spirit is very important. In Acts chapter 19, verse 1, look at what the Bible says. Paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus. So here Paul traveling. Now he gets to Ephesus on the coast, the Bible says, where he found several believers. So Paul, Acts 19, verse 1, he's on the coast traveling in his missionary journey, and he finds some believers. These are not unbelievers. Notice what the text says. These are not some random heathens or atheists. He finds what? Believers. Verse 2. This is what Paul asked them. And I'm going to ask you this tonight. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? This is what Paul asked them. No, they replied. We haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. We didn't even know who's that. Look what Paul says. Then what baptism did you experience? He asked. And then they say this. The baptism of John in verse 4. Paul says this. John's baptism called for repentance from sin but john himself told the people to believe in the one who would come later meeting jesus remember john the baptist said i come and baptize in water one is coming greater whose sandals i'm unworthy to untie who baptizes in the holy spirit and fire so there's we're going to focus on the baptism of the holy spirit he says one's coming who's jesus that's going to baptize you in the holy spirit now we know he did that he blew the holy spirit on the disciples then we know they got filled again in acts he, we know he, he promised in Acts 1. In Acts 2, they get filled again. So this is that baptism. So they were believers, but they didn't hear about the Holy Spirit. And many believers today who heard about him have never experienced him or don't have relationship with him. Now, what Paul did was, the Bible makes it clear. Look at what it says in verse 5 of Acts chapter 19. As soon as they heard this, okay, so Paul says, you're going to get the Holy, the Holy Spirit here. As soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, which tonight, I'm not going to go into detail what that is. That's the same thing we see happen in the book of Acts, where uh, Peter says, be baptized, and then they were baptized in Jesus' name. Some say it was water. Some say, I'm not going into the controversy of what that means, but let's just keep going here. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 6 of Acts 19. Then, okay, don't get all mad. All the religious people are going to start manifesting here. Just listen. Then... When Paul laid his hands on them, very clear, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in other tongues. So here we have speaking in tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. Okay, so what did Paul do? What's the biblical model? Paul did. Now, let me be clear. When I got filled with the Holy Spirit, the night of my salvation, I got baptized. I was speaking in tongues. Didn't even know what was going on. Heard tongues once in my life. Didn't even know what tongues was. I heard it, heard it when I was like five years old, never heard it since. I was trying to stop it because I didn't know what was going on. And my girlfriend was next to me that wasn't a believer. I didn't know what was happening. I was crying, speaking in tongues. The night I had that experience, no one was laying hands on me. Can you get baptized in the Holy Spirit without people laying hands on you? Yes. But the Bible has a biblical precedent where Paul laid his hands and the Holy Spirit came upon them. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, brother, Paul was an apostle. There's no more apostles today. And I want you to stick around because I'm going to show you that you couldn't be more wrong. Okay, I'm going to show you later that there was people that were not apostles that were laying hands on people to receive the Holy Spirit. So now what happens? They get the Holy Ghost and they are speaking in tongues. Now, don't, don't, this is not the night to be mad if you don't speak in tongues. This is not the night to say, well, I don't speak in tongues. God must hate me. No, no, no. Don't think that way. That's not the truth. I'm going to show you some stuff in scripture. And I believe tonight when we pray, you're going to receive the Holy Spirit and you're going to have the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, let me be very clear because there's a lot of stuff we can go into here. I don't believe that you have to speak in tongues as an evidence you be, you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
But I do believe if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you can speak in tongues. Okay, let me give you an example. I had a really good friend, got baptized in the Holy Spirit. This was my old party friend. Life dramatically changed. I'm telling you, this guy went from death to life, went from everything bad to everything good, okay? But he didn't speak in tongues. But he's like, Isaiah, I know I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. I've ex I felt the Holy Spirit come on me. I'm changed. I'm born again. I'm baptized. I know it, okay? And I want to pray in tongues. So I laid hands on him. I said, I believe you can pray in tongues. If you have the Holy Ghost, I believe you can pray in tongues. Now, I'm not talking about speaking with interpretation. I'm going to go into all the details. Just I'm going to take my time and break it all down, okay? I said, I believe you can right now. Just because you haven't doesn't mean you can't. There's a lot of you, let me give you an example, in the chat that can speak another language. You can speak in Spanish, you can speak Italian, you can speak German, you can speak Russian, but you, you rarely do. So you might be able to, but you don't, okay? So I told my friend, I said, I think you can because you've been baptized, but you just haven't opened up your mouth by faith and, and the Holy Spirit spoke out of you. And then within five minutes, we prayed for him. He was praying in tongues, speaking in tongues, the whole thing, okay? Which I'm going to distinguish tonight, praying in tongues versus speaking in tongues in a little bit here. So I do believe there's a lot of you out there, take heart, that have the Holy Spirit. Now, if you're a believer and you put your faith in Jesus and you believe in the cross and you've confessed with your mouth and you put your trust in the finished work of the cross, you have the Holy Spirit, but there is a separate experience of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, ask for the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't say, ask to be saved. He said, ask for the Holy Spirit. So yes, I'm going to show you at salvation, you get the Holy Spirit, but the baptism is a separate, in, a, a separate thing. That's why in Acts 19, Paul didn't say, oh, y'all just need to pray the sinner's prayer and get saved. That's what, if Paul was most pastors, Paul would have showed up and said, have you guys prayed the sinner's prayer? Uh, let me lead you through a prayer. Paul never did that. Paul would have said, hey, put your faith in Jesus, believe in the finished work, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. Paul didn't say that either. They were already believers. Paul laid hands on them and they received the baptism. So I hope you're seeing there's a distinguishing element here of Paul laying his hands on them. I want to show you guys this in the front hand of everything we're going to talk about. And I want to preface it with this because there was something about Paul laying his hands, then receiving it through the laying on of hands. It's not just, oh, I got it because I'm saved. Okay. A lot of you don't speak in tongues because that's, you just think, oh, I just got it because I'm saved. Religion talks about Jesus. Religion talks about the Holy Spirit, but religion doesn't introduce you to the Holy Spirit. It just introduces you to facts about the Holy Spirit. Encounter, relationship is experiential. In Matthew 7, when he said, I never knew you, that word knew means firsthand experience. So the goal is not just spew out a bunch of scriptures tonight and a bunch of facts. I'm introducing you and talking to you about a literal person that can change everything so it's not just rambling off facts or the benefits of tongues which we will talk about tonight the baptism of the holy spirit is one of the most if not the most incredible things that can ever happen to you yes you get the holy spirit when you believe but baptism is different let me show you this okay and we're going to go into the whole theology of this i'm going to take my time ephesians 1 13 through 14 in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth look at this the gospel of your salvation in whom also having believed, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of, heart, of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Okay, so in Paul's day, a seal was a portable instrument that was used to stamp a document. That's what a seal was. You stamped a document. It had the power and the authenticity of an actual signature, and no document was considered reliable unless it had the seal. So that's what the seal is, okay? So if you received a letter that was glued partially open, you might go like, oh, I wonder if somebody stole, uh, stole part of the letter or added to the letter, because the letter isn't sealed. What Paul is saying here when he says, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, having believed. You heard the gospel, you put your faith, you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit, you were stamped. The seal is a sign that it's reliable and true. So the seal of the Holy Spirit at salvation is a sign that what God has done is reliable and true. So when you became a Christian, God sealed you and gave you, whether you believe it, like it or not, the Holy Spirit, this is what Paul says, as a deposit or a down payment of the incredible future blessing that you'll have in heaven when you, when you end up with God for eternity. 
Now notice the Holy Spirit is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. The Holy Spirit's God's deposit in us right now for the age to come. So it's like I used to work at Kmart, Kmart, Kmart when I was 15 and a half. That was my first job was at Kmart, right? Blue light special. And we used to have something called layaway, which I know all the young people. I'm so old now. I, I say young people, all the young people. I'm Oh, help me, Lord. Young people don't know what layaway is. Layaway is where you'd put a deposit down. They would take the item, set it aside. And then when you paid it off, you would get the item. So God is saying, I'm going to put a down payment on you by giving you the Holy Spirit. What happens when he gives you the Holy Spirit? You're now like layaway set apart. You're set aside a holy people, not sold to anyone or anything else. Now that I've been sealed with the Holy Ghost, are you guys catching the revelation? I've been set apart. I've been set aside. I'm no longer for sale, devil. Satan, you can't have me. I've been purchased. And the, whole, and the devil goes, prove it. The Holy Ghost is the down payment. The Holy Ghost is the deposit. No one can buy me because I've already been purchased and set aside. What happens? God says, I'm going to complete the full payment when Jesus returns. So I'm set apart right now. I'm a pilgrim in this land. The Holy Spirit's the down payment. Now God says, I'm going to send Jesus to finish the payment. When Jesus returns and raptures his church, that will be us full payment in heaven with God. So the Holy Spirit gives us assurance that we are number one, secure. God doesn't break his promise. Just like a seal shouldn't be broken, the person that receives it knows it's secure, okay? It's authentic, number two. The wax seal had a unique design. Each person had their own seal. The Holy Spirit shows God's ownership and authenticity. He's unique. He works, oh, this is good preaching, uniquely. Each person had a unique stamp that verified it. they are the one that stamped the letter. The Holy Spirit has given us a unique anointing. We all have a unique gifting. Don't be mad that you have a different gifting or someone else's gifting is not like yours. When I was immature, I used to go like, oh, you know, if they don't shout the way I shout or preach like me or talk about deliverance, they're false or wrong. And a lot of guys still do that on YouTube. That's absolutely immature. I realize, oh, the Holy Spirit works differently in every person. He's unique. He has a personality. And so just because their ministry is not like mine, I'm not going to demonize them. I'm not going to make heresy hunter videos because their ministry is not like mine. I just have to realize every part of the body is different. Okay. So we're unique. We are authentic. We're secure. We're approved. The Holy Spirit, it's God's approval of us the same way a seal approved of a letter. God says, I've approved of you. I'm going to show you this later in Acts chapter 10, where God approves of the Gentiles by what? sealing them with the holy spirit they get the holy spirit also the seal proves something was genuine and the holy spirit proves to us that we're genuine sons and daughters of god when god gives you the holy spirit god says you are genuinely mine i'm genuinely giving the holy spirit and, and i'll answer questions later i know you guys are asking questions in the chat i got you later okay so with salvation let me be clear comes an implanted desire to please god we won't take advantage of the holy spirit's power but with his power, we'll obey God more and more. We don't use the seal. Well, I'm sealed now, brother. I could just, you know, I'll never backslide. I'll never, I could never lose my salvation. Once saved, always saved. No, we don't take advantage of the seal of the Holy Spirit. We don't take advantage of it. Now we allow the Holy Spirit to empower us to obey God more and more. Every Christian, so what do they have? The seal of the Holy Spirit immediately at the time of salvation. Okay, and our benefits are... Romans 3, we're justified. Romans 8, we're not condemned. Romans 8, we're set apart from the power of sin and death. 1 Corinthians, we're sanctified and made acceptable. Uh, we're righteous. At resurrection, we're going to be made alive eternally. We're new creatures. 2 Corinthians, we've received God's righteousness. Colossians, we're perfect in God's sight. Colossians 2, we're set free from the sinful nature. 2 Timothy, we have, we'll have eternal glory. These are promises of the inheritance that God has given us. Now, what did we just learn? Salvation. We get the Holy Ghost. So if you're a Christian, you got the Holy Spirit. We're not arguing that tonight. We're not debating that. Now, here's the separate thing. This is the other component, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is where some say, now, I don't know fully if I believe this, but I've heard it said, and it's, it's, it's an interesting thought, but I'm not going with it. I'm just saying it's interesting. Some say when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit from goes just from being in your spirit, man, 
which if you don't know, we're tri tripart. We're soul, body, and spirit. Some say the Holy Spirit goes from being in your spirit and also goes into your soul. That's where your mind, you will, and your emotions are changed. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. I don't know if that's exactly what happens. We don't know it's spiritual. It's a great mystery, like many of these things. But we do know there is, I can't stress this enough, another event where you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, where Jesus didn't say, just believe and you get the Holy Spirit, nothing else. There is a separate event. We saw it in Acts 19. We also see it in Acts chapter 2. This is one of the most famous, famous, famous examples of the baptism of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. The apostles are gathered together and the Holy Spirit comes as tongues of fire rest upon each of them. What happens, chat? They start speaking in other languages. Now, the tongues they speak in is a tongue of another language. So it wasn't, maybe it was also, but we know it was a tongue where somebody can understand it. People were saying, these men are speaking in our dialect, in our language. How do they know that? So there could have been a heavenly component and a tongue to it. We don't know. We do know that they were speaking in other languages as the spirit gave them utterances. They began to speak and many in Jerusalem heard it. Okay, so that's Acts 2. Acts 10, Paul's preaching to Cornelius and his household. As, P I'm sorry, not Paul, Peter. As Peter's preaching in Acts chapter 10, they receive the Holy Spirit as he's preaching. And I'm praying tonight that would happen to some of you. And this was, the Bible says they spoke in tongues and they praise God. And this event marked the inclusion of the Gentiles into the Christian community. Now, basically God was saying, all right, the message is for the Gentiles as well. I'm validating it by giving them the Holy Spirit. What was it? The seal. Are you guys seeing this? The seal of approval. God says, I approve of the Gentiles receiving salvation. How do we know? As Peter's preaching, the Holy Ghost falls upon them. How did Peter know that the Holy Ghost fell upon them? What happened, chat? They were speaking in tongues. They were speaking in tongues during the service that Peter was having. All right, Acts 19, we already talked about that. Paul encountered some believers in Ephesus. They received the baptism of repentance of John, but they didn't hear about the Holy Spirit. Paul, what does he do? Lay hands on them, and they receive the Holy Spirit. So we see three instances here. Look at this. One, the Holy Ghost comes upon them as a promise. Again, you don't have to have someone lay hands on you tonight. Some of you will receive it. We're going to pray for like five or ten minutes in tongues tonight at the end of the broadcast during the prayer time. So we're just going to go for it. And many of you are going to start praying in it. And it's going to be a be beautiful, amazing. It'll change your life. Okay, so Holy Ghost comes upon them. Then Cornelius' household. What happens? Peter's preaching and the Holy Spirit comes upon them as he's preaching. Biblical, biblical, biblical. Then three, Paul lays hands on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. That's three different occasions. Now let's give some objections to the false doctrine. I'm going to say even farther. The doctrine of demons that says... Oh, it's just gibberish. You're just making it up. It's not for today. The Holy Spirit baptism is not for today. Tongues are not for today. And listen, I'm just saying to the guys out there that will watch this video that are going to critique it and make clips and they've, they're fresh out of content because, you know, the heresy hunters that have literally said with their own mouth, oh, you guys are just speaking gibberish. First of all, you're saying millions of people that speak in tongues are all speaking gibberish. Second of all, that's scary. To say that we're speaking gibberish and making it up, what a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of a living God because you're not making fun of us. If we truly are praying in the Holy Spirit, which I know you don't believe we are, you're making fun of the Holy Spirit. So guys, I would run 100 miles an hour from anyone that says speaking in tongues is fake, gibberish made up. Not only they're extremely arrogant to tell millions of people that their encounter is false, that they have a false Holy Spirit, but man, you're disrespecting the Holy Ghost it, I just hope you're right because it's going to be an awkward day on judgment when you stand before God and say, I mocked and made fun of the, the Holy Spirit praying. Imagine how terrible it would be to hear somebody in church praying. You know, you hear your grandmother praying in church and you get up on stage on your platform and you make a YouTube video and you start mocking your grandma. Oh, my grandma, she doesn't know how to pray. What a joke. She's making it up, babbling gibberish. Who would say, I would never make fun of my grandma, that's terrible? Okay, yet you're doing it to the Holy Spirit. Yet these guys on YouTube, these basement prophets on YouTube that you've never seen pray on their broadcast ever, I would question if they even do pray, are saying we're babbling and they're making fun of, not us, the Holy Spirit praying through us. Because that's what scripture says. 
Scripture says, I'm going to show you, the Holy Spirit is praying through us. So what are some of the objections? If they're so convinced, let's go through some of these false doctrines, false teaching objections. False teaching, false doctrine number one, which is the, is the worst one, especially if you know anything about the Bible, is tongues have ceased. This is what a lot of the cessationists, a lot of the reform theology, a lot of the John MacArthurites, this is what they teach. Tongues have ceased. They're no longer. And the only verse they use, because there's only one that would even minorly allude to it, and it doesn't even allude to it. I'm going to show you, and you're going to be like, oh, that's dumb. That's not even what it means. They use 1 Corinthians 13, 8, that says tongues have ceased. This is the verse. Verse 8 of 1 Corinthians 13. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Where there are tongues, they will cease. Notice that they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, oh, interesting, knowledge. That's interesting. It's right by tongues. It will vanish away. So I want to show you guys this. This is their verse. This is their home run verse that the gifts have ceased. Look at how weak this argument is, how dumb it is. Knowledge will vanish away. Tongues will vanish away. And I mean, really, their knowledge must have vanished away for them to believe this. But look at verse 9. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Verse 10. This is their verse. But when that which is perfect has come which that which is in part will be done away okay very simple you read this and go oh that which is perfect is jesus when jesus comes we don't need to speak in tongues we don't need to prophesy and we don't even need knowledge it's going to vanish away because we'll have all understanding and knowledge of god we'll know him fully not looking through a mirror but fully knowing him face to face and the, the and it goes on and their case gets worse as the verse goes but notice this they say tongues have ceased, which if you read the text, it doesn't say tongues have ceased. It says tongues will. Tongues will. Not that they have ceased. Tongues will cease. And so will knowledge. Is knowledge still here? Yes. Okay, so so are tongues. It's just basic logic. Prophecy shall fail and knowledge will vanish away. Shall. Prophecy shall. What does shall mean? Future event. Shall means future event. Tongues haven't seized just as much as knowledge hasn't seized. It's a false doctrine. I think it's absolutely demonic that teaches against the gifts, teaches against the Holy Spirit and against what God is doing. Who's that which is perfect? Now, what, what would they believe? They believe that which is perfect is the scripture, the canon. Now that we have the Bible, that's perfect. Okay, we know that's not true because we know that which is perfect is Jesus because later on it tells us, in the same way we look at a mirror, one day we'll see him face to face. We don't see him face to face now. We see him through a mirror, but we will see him face to face. That which is perfect is not the Bible. The perfect is Jesus, okay? And mods, feel free to mute whoever. I don't know who you guys are saying is trolling, but whatever, whoever's trolling, just mute him. We're not, we don't care. Ban him, mute him, doesn't matter. Okay, so when, when will tongues cease? When are they no longer relevant? When Christ has come. That which is perfect. Has Christ returned yet? No, he hasn't. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 14 39 and this is what they won't tell you they'll quote that but they won't go one more chapter and this is what Paul says this is 1 Corinthians 14 39 wherefore brethren covet to prophesy covet to prophesy and do not forbid speaking with tongues Paul what should we do you should not forbid speaking in tongues so to all of you out there that are like, we shouldn't speak in tongues, it ceased, false. Paul says, don't. I'm going to believe Paul over you. So that's number one objection, tongues have ceased. We already just proved that. That's ridiculous. Number two, only the apostles can pray for people to receive the Holy Spirit. Brother Isaiah, what are you doing out here teaching people? You can lay hands and receive the Holy Ghost. Only the apostles can do that. Wrong. Acts chapter 9, verse 17. And when Ananias went his way and entered the house, laying his hand on him, he said... Who's doing it? Ananias. Lays his hands on who? Brother, Paul, Brother Saul. This is what he said. This is Acts 9. If you're taking notes, 17. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Whoa. So here we have Ananias laying his hands on Saul. And what does Saul get? The Holy Ghost. Who's Saul? Saul, I'm sorry, who's Ananias? Ananias is not an apostle, not a prophet, not an evangelist, not a pastor, not a teacher. He's a lay person. Yet as a lay person, he's able to get the Holy Spirit. He's able to lay hands and people can receive the Holy Spirit. 
So there's your, only the apostles can lay hands. We don't need that no more because the apostles aren't around anymore. Wrong, 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 wrong. Number three, tongues are of the devil, brother. If you speak in tongues, you're going to be speaking a demonic language. Some Christians legitimately are afraid that if they pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God, or not God, the devil will give them a false Holy Spirit. And so what a lot of these guys, I, I want to be careful not to label them too much. They will say tongues is of the devil. First of all, when you speak or pray in tongues, you don't desire to sin. And the only people that say this, ding, 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 are people that don't pray in tongues. Because you know if you prayed in tongues, when you pray in tongues, what happens? You desire to live holy. You desire to live righteous. You desire to walk circumspect before God. You desire to walk clean. You desire to walk pure. You desire God, holiness, fasting, prayer. When I pray in tongues, oh, I want to read the word of God after. Oh man, I feel the Holy Ghost fire when I'm praying in tongues. No one goes and prays in tongues and says, oh, I really want to go do some demonic ritual now. No one prays in tongues and the devil gets glory for it. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm guys, I'm going to show you how to receive tongues, all of that. We're going to do that. Don't worry. But let me show you this. Tongues are of the devil. I'm scared. I'm going to get the false Holy Spirit. I'm going to prove to you definitively. You will not get a false tongues tonight. Luke 11, 13. This is your verse. I'm sorry, Luke 11, 11, and we'll go all the way to verse 13. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will you give him a stone? Or what if a son asks for a fish? Will you give him a snake instead of a fish? Verse 12. What if a son asks for an egg? Will you give him a scorpion? Okay, verse 13. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more Will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? So what is Jesus establishing? If you're asking for something good, I'm not going to give you something bad. Stop being afraid of, I'm going to get a false demonic tongues. I promise you won't. I promise you won't. The only people that speak in demonic tongues, excuse me, are people that intentionally want to. No one's accidentally out here speaking in a demonic tongue. So how much more does God love you? What do we have to do? We have to ask. I'll share that more later. Okay. That's number three, false doctrine. Tongues are of the devil. No. Number four, it's not for everyone, brother. Oh, have you guys heard this? Only some people can have this gift. Okay. I'm going to show you why this is wrong. Mark 16, 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. In my name, they shall cast out. And they will speak with new tongues. So when people say it's not God's will for everyone, they usually imply, you know, this is for the elite Christians and only those special Christians get it and some second class Christians aren't allowed to have it. That's not, that's not true. Now, the objection they use is 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 28. So let's be fair and look at the verse they'd use in saying it's not for everybody. Watch this. Verse 27 of 1 Corinthians, New King James Version. Um, verse 27 of 1 Corinthians 12. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And God has appointed these in the church, okay? What is he appointed? First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, and the varieties of tongues. And I want you to notice something, chat, because we're doing a deep dive here. The varieties of tongues. You see that? Later, I'm going to show you, Paul calls it different kinds of tongues. So the idea that it's just speaking in tongues only or foreign languages only is not founded it's unfounded look at what paul says the varieties of tongues what is paul talking about ministries okay what are these that paul's describing ministries apostle is a ministry prophet is a ministry teacher is a ministry working of miracles is referring to a miracle ministry gifts of healings is referring to a ministry helps is a ministry administrations what is administrations chat a ministry. So Paul says administrations, helps, gifts of healings, and then he says a variety of tongues. So varieties of tongues in context is ministries. So he says, are we all doing these things? Verse 27 says, you're the body of Christ and members individually. Each member has their own ministry or job to perform. Okay. Like what 1 Corinthians 12, 29, verse 30 says, are all apostles are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles. I'm using what they would use to say, you're not all supposed to get this. Are all workers of miracles. Do all have the gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? 
Do all interpret? These questions, obviously the answer is no. Not all operate in these ministries. Look at this. Now let me show you. It's a Now is this talking about what we're talking about tonight, your private prayer life? That's what we're focusing on, praying in tongues. Is this talking about your private prayer life? No. It's talking about your job or ministry within the body of Christ. So not everyone is called to these ministries, whether apostles or varieties of tongues. So not everyone is called to stand on a stage publicly and speak in tongues and then interpret to a body of believers. Are you guys catching this? We're not all called to that. This is not saying we can't all pray in tongues. If you have the Holy Spirit, I want to ask you this question. If you have the Holy Spirit and everyone in the Bible, just stay with me, spoke in tongues that got the Holy Spirit. Just stay with me. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you've been sealed and promised. I've already shared that scripture. Why would the Holy Spirit not want to pray out of you? You're like, well, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't want to pray out of me. Why not? Why would he say, I don't, I don't want it for you. Now, do we all have the ministry job? No, we don't. Okay. So it's not for everybody. That's just not what the Bible says. Mark 16 says, in, they will speak with new tongues. And then Paul again says, I want all of you to speak in tongues. Look at this. Look at what 1 Corinthians 14, 5 says. This is Paul. I wish you all would speak with tongues. So Paul's, guys, this is not disputable. This is not subjective. It's objective. Paul's desire, he wrote this down, is I wish all of you would speak in tongues. That's literally what Paul says. So do we know the heart of God? Do we have to sit here and go, I don't really know if God wants me to have this. We know the heart of God. The heart of God is, I wish all of you spoke in tongues. The Holy Spirit, the word of God, inspi the Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write this. So imagine the Holy Spirit saying it if Paul wrote it. I want all of you, God says, to speak with tongues. Paul said it, inspired by the Holy Ghost. So this is Paul. I wish all of you would speak with tongues. Okay. Now, last objections, number five. This is an interesting one. They say it was always a foreign language, never a heavenly language. Now, the Bible does talk about speaking in tongues of angels, which alludes to heavenly language, but I don't want to go into that. I want to give you one simple verse that disproves that it's always a foreign language. And doc Dr. Michael Brown has great debates on this. Uh, in my opinion, he runs circles around guys that say it's only a foreign language. It's always another language. It's never supernatural. It's never um, heavenly. It's never, look at this. I'm going to disprove this right now. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. Look at what it says. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Okay, so remember, the idea is it's always only a foreign language. It's never supernatural. It's never tongues of angels. It's never the Holy Spirit praying out of you, okay? 1 Corinthians 14, 2. So keep that in your mind. That's the objection. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the Spirit... He speaks mysteries. If it's always only a foreign language, someone in the world would understand him. But Paul says, no one understands him. But in the spirit, he speaks mysteries, okay? Now, I told you guys my testimony. I got tongues the night I got saved. I was speaking in it, and I've spoken it probably every day for the last 13 years. It's been life-changing, and I'm going to tell you why it's been so life-changing. If God did it for me, I believe he wants to do it for you. Those are five objections. I think I just proved those with scripture. I mean, it's super clear. Very, very clear. And I'm trying to go slow. Okay, so first thing I want you to remember. To, so I want you to separate in your head, speaking in tongues with an interpretation. I'm actually going to show you how to interpret tongues in a couple minutes here. It's actually biblical. We can interpret tongues. I'm going to show you how to interpret them. Okay, so in your mind tonight, speaking in tongues. I'm 40 minutes in, but I feel like I'm in my intro. Speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. Two different things. I'm going to show you this in scripture. First of all, let's baseline it this. 1 Corinthians 12, 10 says, to another is given different kinds of tongues. So we know starting off, there's different kinds of tongues. There's not just unknown languages, tongues for an interpretation, heavenly, praying in tongues, there's different kinds. So we know that praying in tongues could fall under the different kinds. Even though we're not going to explicitly say, oh, it's praying in tongues right here. I'm going to show you this. There's a lot of confusion because people say, well, it's not God's will for me. You know, different kinds. We already showed you those are ministries. Paul makes it clear in 1 Corinthians 14 too. 
the one who speaks in tongues does not speak to men, but to God. That's the praying in tongues. So 1 Corinthians 12, speaking in tongues publicly on a stage with an interpretation for the sake of context. 1 Corinthians 14, 2, who speaks in tongues is not speaking to men, but to God. But it's like, okay, Paul, you already said we're speaking to men because tongues edify the church with interpretation. You've already told us, you know, it's better to prophesy than speak in tongues because then everyone can be edified. So now you're saying it's for my own edification. So that's the prayer tongue. So we already see Paul speaking of two. Okay, tongues Paul's described in 1 Corinthians 12 are for the building up in other of others. The 1 Corinthians 14 are for the building up of yourself. And then Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, 28, different ministries. We already talked about that. But these are for the context of public gatherings in a public gathering public gatherings so private tongue first corinthians 14 that's prayer praying in tongues praying in tongues and i'm going to show you how paul did this as well then public tongues first corinthians 12 speak in tongues and you interpret the tongue okay and i'm going to show you how to interpret the tongue as well now let me explain why some say well tongues only for some believers first corinthians 12 29 public gathering are all apostles are all teachers i explained this already actually let me just recap it no do you all interpret no publicly we don't all function in that ministry job and i think i gave a good explanation but that is not to say you can't be baptized in the holy spirit and speak in tongues tonight well paul says don't speak in tongues brother in a public gathering wrong where did you read that that's not what paul said look at what first corinthians 14 28 says if anyone speaks in a tongue two or three at most should speak one at a time and someone must interpret if there's no interpreter the speaker now i want you to think about this when paul says speaker i want you to literally think about the speaker are you guys catching it i'm like pagani tonight did you catch it the speaker what good paul says the speaker should keep quiet and speak to himself and god here's what was happening in corinth they were getting on stage and they were speaking in tongues let's just say 30 minutes, we don't know how long, but 40 minutes, an hour. And everybody's sitting there. Imagine going to church on Sunday and somebody gets up there and speaks an hour in tongues and you brought your unsafe family. You'd be mad. You'd be like, dude, nobody understands you. Don't speak in tongues publicly unless someone's going to interpret it. Do you see what Paul's saying? He's not forbidding speaking in tongues. Because later Paul says, don't forbid speaking in tongues. So Paul's not contradicting himself. He's saying, if you're going to stand on stage as a speaker, only two or three of you. Why are you all up there? Why is there 20 of you up there speaking in tongues with no interpreter? Now, let me also make this clear. He's not talking about a prayer meeting. Tonight, in about, I don't know, a couple minutes, 30, 20 minutes, I'm going to pray in tongues for five minutes, let's say. All right? And a lot of people in the chat are going to say, oh, brother, you shouldn't be speaking in tongues in public. Uh, there's no interpretation. That's not what Paul's saying. Paul's saying if you're speaking publicly at a church service, not a prayer meeting, which we're about to break out in a prayer meeting tonight, not a prayer meeting, not a live stream. Paul's saying if you're speaking a message, you need an interpreter. If you don't have an interpreter, stay quiet. And we all say to Paul, amen. Amen, Paul. So this is not Paul forbidding tongues. So the next time you have a friend that goes, Paul said don't speak in tongues publicly. No, he didn't. He said you should do it one or two, three people max, and you should have an interpreter there. Again, at a prayer meeting, you don't need to get all nervous. Oh, my pastor speaks in tongues at the prayer meeting. Who cares? You're at a prayer meeting. You're all praying. What do you want him to do? So again, no, no point in preaching in tongues if no, if no one understands. And look what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, 23. If so, look at this. If unbelievers or people who don't understand these things come into your church meeting and they hear everyone speaking in an unknown language, they're going to think you're crazy. I just quoted word for word, 1 Corinthians 14, 23. So Paul says, listen, you go two hours in tongues, they're going to think you're crazy. It's better to prophesy. And then look at what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, 18. I hope someone's getting free. I hope this is helping some of you. Wow, we did 3,300 of you. Praise the Lord. Look at this. And we're going to pray in tongues soon here. Look at this. Paul said, 1 Corinthians 14, 18. Paul says, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. <laughs> Paul my religious pastor told me tongues is not for today my religious pastor told me that it's not for me 
Paul says, I thank God I speak in tongues more than all of you. Yet in church, oh, so he's saying publicly in church, there's something different here. In church, I would rather speak five words with my understanding that I might teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. Okay, let's just be very clear here. Paul says, I speak in tongues more than all of you. I want all of you to speak in tongues. We showed that earlier. But Paul is not speaking in tongues in church. So the question is, Paul, where are you speaking in tongues at? Because you're doing it more than everybody. Paul's like, yeah, by the way, <laughs> all of you in the chat, I speak in tongues more than all of you. I'm out here praying and fasting more than all of you. I mean, Paul's just saying it like that. But then Paul says, but in church, I would rather speak five words my understanding. So where are you speaking? Someone type in the chat as, as our network gets cut out here. Come back, come back, refresh if you have to. Where is Paul speaking in tongues? I want you to type it in the chat. If he's not doing it in church and he's doing it more than all of you. And remember, the religious people say, well, there's no private prayer tongue, brother. There's no private tongue. It's just, oh no, we're glitching. We're losing signal. All right, I'm going to wait for you guys to come back before we pick up the broadcast. I'm here. Okay, R type it in the chat. Where is Paul speaking it? In private. I had to wait for the signal. We're back. We're back. Refresh the feed. The devil is a liar. So Paul's in private. He's not doing it in church. Yet in church, I would rather speak five words of my understanding. So where is Paul speaking in tongues? In private. Is there a private prayer language? Of course. What else is Paul doing? So he distinguishes the difference. Okay. There's also a gift of interpretation of tongues. This is the ability to interpret words given by the Holy Spirit to the person interpreting or someone else that is able to interpret into a known language. That's interpretation. Write this down. It's the gift of interpretation, not the gift of translation. So we're not translating when we're interpreting tongues. This is going to help you. If you want to interpret tongues and you're like, hey, I want to, again, speak in tongues with a message, different kinds, and then I want to interpret it. I'm not going to translate, meaning I don't need word for word translation. I need interpretation. No, I've had translators before, and sometimes I'll say something and they will uh, they will say it short, something long or something short, or I'll say something long and they'll say something short. And I'm asked them before, why was that so long? And they say, in our language, it's described or explained differently so the listener can understand the context. So when you're using an interpreter, I'm sorry, not a translator, an interpreter, they're going to give a general idea, not an exact translation. I said the wrong word, okay? So if I'm speaking with an interpreter and I say something long, they might say something short to just get the general idea across. A translator, I misspoke there, copies things down word for word. When you're translating something, you're getting a word for word translation. We're not translating, we're interpreting. Interpretation is what? The general idea. Translating is what? Word for word, okay? So that's interpretation of tongues. When you're using the interpretation of tongues gift, you're giving a general idea. So you don't need to, you don't need to say, thus says the Lord and speak in King James Greek or Hebrew. Remember, you're not translating, you're interpreting tongues. So I'm just gonna give the general idea. So if I speak in a tongue in a church or with a message or God wants me to interpret it, okay? I speak in the tongue and say it's, I get an interpretation. The interpretation might be in the church. Hey, God says, I see that you guys are weary. I'm giving you a fresh strength. I'm giving you a fresh wind and I'm moving you into new territory, whatever. That might be the interpretation. The tongue might be long. The message might be short because I'm interpreting the message. That's how the Holy Spirit gives you the interpretation. Same with prophecy, same with words of knowledge. When you get it, you just launch out and God will give you more. Sometimes when you get an interpretation, you just got to give one word and then you give the next word and then you give the next word. I know it's glitching. I'm losing internet here. Okay, let me disconnect from my Wi-Fi on my phone. I don't know what to tell you guys. My internet's cutting in and out. I do want you to get what I'm about to say because it's the most important part. So let me wait a second for it to come back. Let me check it on my phone. We just lost like a thousand people. Just refresh. It's very frustrating. That's why I hate looking at the numbers. Oh, we just fully lost signal. I hope we come back. The devil is a liar. All right, well, we're going to keep preaching through it. Okay, our internet, we just got to pray that it keeps going because this is this is the best part for me. All right, so you're interpreting it. Now, how do you interpret it? 
Sometimes you'll get a, a feeling of butterflies in your stomach or a pressure or a nudging. The Holy Spirit will nudge you. Okay, still here. Hey, refresh it. We lost a thousand of you, but it's not your inerrant to me. Just refresh it. I'm praying it doesn't fully cut out, but we'll see. Okay, so you're going to get a nudging, butterflies, pressure. Everyone gets a different way. But let me show you a scripture you've probably never seen before. How do we interpret tongues? 1 Corinthians 14, 12 through 13. Look at what it says here. Even so you, since you're zealous for spiritual gifts. How many of you are zeal zealous? Like, I want spiritual gifts. I want to speak in tongues. I want to interpret tongues. I want all of it, okay? Since you're zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Therefore, look at this. Let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret it. So what do you do here? You speak in a tongue. Oh, the internet, I hope it comes back. It says zero. It says we're completely cut off. Okay, hold on. The devil is a liar. Are we back? It's saying I have no internet, but I hope I think it's actually still going. We're we're barely guys, we're hanging on. Oh, uh, we're hanging on. Okay, I'm not gonna look down because my network is going in and out and we're hanging on by a thread here. So what do you do? First Corinthians 14, 12, just write it down. You speak in a tongue with a message. This is not praying in tongues. This is over here, separate. Remember? Now we're talking about you speak with a tongue with a message. And then you pray that you might interpret it. Now, I know a lot of people, one person will speak in tongues and then another person will interpret the tongues. And that's great. Okay. And I think that's okay. But I don't know how we missed this. Biblically, you're supposed to speak in tongues with a message, stop, and then say, Lord, I pray you'd give me an interpretation for that tongue. And then the Lord gives you an interpretation. You get the download, you get the word. And then you give the word. That's how we do it, y'all. That's how we do it. So how do you do it? Now, what might it feel like? It might feel like, oh, I'm, I feel nudged. I feel like something wanting me, pushing me. I feel a feeling like I should do this. So then, boom, I speak in it. Then I pray, Lord, would you give me an interpretation for this message? Again, this is a public church setting, maybe for a friend or family member. And then, boom, you speak it with an interpretation. Speak it with faith. Speak it with boldness. And, if you, and guys, you're like, well, what if God doesn't? Why are you praying if you don't think God's going to answer your prayer? That, that's, that's the wrong way to do it. What if God doesn't give me an interpretation? If you're thinking that, then you should not be praying for an interpretation. Why? How are we supposed to pray? I've taught you guys this over and over. We pray with faith. We pray believing God's going to answer our prayers. We pray passionately. We're, we're zealous for these gifts. We don't go like, oh, maybe God's not going to. No, we believe. We believe God's going to. So pray with faith that God's going to give it to you. Look what Romans 8.26 says. Okay, we're almost done here. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. How does he do it? And I'm asking that question to, to Paul in Romans 8.26. Likewise, the Spirit helps in our weakness. I'm weak a lot. So I want to know, how does the Spirit help in our weakness? Paul, please tell me. I hope the verse doesn't end here. How does the Spirit help in our weakness? Look at this. For when we don't know what should we should pray as we ought to, the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which can't be uttered. Whoa! Chad, I love this. I'm weak. Guys, Isaiah Saldivar's weak. I don't even know what to pray half the time. Lord, what do I pray? Have you guys felt that way? I look at my life and all the prayer requests. Guys, I have a list on my notes apps of names and names and names. I'm weak. I'm tired. I'm anxious. I'm stressed. I'm going through it. This, 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 and my family, my friends, and my whatever. Are you, am I the only one, chat? I don't know what to pray. How do I pray? I don't even know what to pray for. I could pray for 10 hours and it wouldn't even be in the beginning of my list. So what happens? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. The Holy Spirit himself, capital H, the Holy Ghost goes, I got you. You don't know what to pray for? Be quiet. Don't pray in English. Praise. That's the Holy Spirit praying out of me. He prays out of us. By faith, we pray in faith. And then the Holy Spirit just starts praying out of me the perfect will of God. Chat, 
Who knows the perfect will of God? Who knows the goodness of our Lord? Who do you think knows? God himself. God himself prays out of us. So religious people, get out of here. You're making it up, brother. You're speaking gibberish. Stop the cap. No. The Bible's clear. The spirit in our weakness. We don't know what to pray. The Holy Ghost prays out of us. So it's beautiful. So what are the benefits? I have a YouTube video breaking all the detail down. I'm going to run through them. And then we're going to pray. I have another video I want to show, but I really want to get into prayer. Um, should I show the video? Type one if you want to see the video and then we'll pray. It's, I'll, I'll, I'll skip it through. It's a quick video. It'll be like three to four minutes. But okay, let me just give you a couple benefits of praying in tongues. Number one is when you pray in tongues, you engage in spirit-led prayer. Romans 8, 26, we just said that. This is the Holy Spirit interceding out of you on your behalf. Your prayers aligning with the perfect will of God. Imagine you go through something traumatic. You're not going to be able to pray good. You're going to pray in doubt and unbelief. You're going to, your prayer is, God, why did this happen to me? How could you let me go through this? The Holy Spirit will pray the perfect will of God. So benefit one is spirit-led prayer. That's the Holy Ghost praying out of you. Benefit number two is edification. Look what 1 Corinthians 14, 4. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. So this is benefit number two, working out spiritually. Type that in the chat. Well, don't type it because you're going to freeze my thing again. Working out spiritually, all of you big buff guys. And I know I'm supposed to be in the gym. I'm going to be in the gym soon. I have a few things I'm working out and then I'll be working out, okay? When I'm praying in the spirit, my spirit is bench pressing. When I'm praying in the spirit, my spirit's doing CrossFit. If I have any CrossFitters here. When I pray in the spirit, what am I doing? Edifying myself. Praying, praying, praying. I'm praying, I'm edifying, I'm building up, I'm building up, I'm building up. Anyone who speaks in tongues edifies themselves. Okay, so I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm working out spiritually. Benefit three, I'm deepening my intimacy with God. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. Dear friends, by building yourself up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Now I know some guys are like, oh, praying in the Holy Spirit. Guys, don't, don't Greek your way out of the scripture. Praying in the Holy Spirit means praying in the Holy Spirit. You don't need 20,000 things to figure that out. It's very simple. When you pray in the Spirit, you're deepening your intimacy with God. It's a major benefit. Another benefit is praying in tongues is a powerful weapon in spiritual warfare. When you pray in tongues, you're engaging in strategic warfare. If there's warfare you need to overcome, you pray in tongues, God intervenes. I don't know how to break through this spiritual warfare. I don't know how to pray for this. All of a sudden, I pray in tongues, the Holy Ghost, boom. If you're somewhere and you get someone's uh, uh, name in your head and, and God says, pray for them, pray for them, start praying in tongues. Start praying in tongues. And the Holy Spirit will pray the perfect will of God for that person. I've been places in a store before. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit... Boom, drops a name in me. And I just, two, three minutes in tongues, right there under my breath. I'm just boom, 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 praying in tongues right there under my breath. Praying in tongues, praying in tongues. You don't got to go walk around Walmart screaming in tongues. I'm just under my breath real quick, real quick, right there in the aisle. That person texts me. You'll never believe, dude. I got in this car accident at this time. You'll never believe this thing happened to me. The minute God gave you my name, I was just praying for you, brother, in tongues. God knows. God intervened. So the Holy Spirit, when you become an intercessor, you say, Lord, make me an intercessor. The Lord will use you to stand in the gap and intercede for people. And that will happen oftentimes in tongues. Powerful weapon of spiritual warfare, praying in tongues. Also, it brings uni unity and it edifies others. 1 Corinthians 14, 26. What shall we say, brothers? When you come together, each of you has a hymn, a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue or an interpretation. Everything must be done so the church may be built up. So another benefit is it really brings unity and it edifies other people that are that are there when you're speaking in tongues. Okay, so I want to I want to pray in tongues for you know three three to four minutes. I want to pray for you guys. I want to talk to you about receiving the Holy Spirit in a minute, but I first want to watch this video. We won't watch the whole thing for the sake of time because I still do want to do a little thing about receiving the Holy Spirit. Many of you are gonna get the Holy Spirit tonight for the first time, but I do want to roll this video here. Let me get it queued up. And see if we can roll this okay this is an old video and i'm going to fast forward to where they scan this guy's brain okay they're going to scan a guy's brain that's speaking in tongues 
And I want to show you what comes up when they scan this guy's brain. You might have seen this video. It's old, but nonetheless, the, the truth is the same. Watch this. Watch this. This is incredible. This is incredible. Watch this. Is speaking through them. Okay, hold on. My earphones are not coming through. We're on speakers. We can do this. We can do this. Okay, we're going to have to just do the speakers because my earphones are not working. So hold on. Don't stress. Watch this. They're going to scan a guy's brain that's speaking in tongues. Do you hear yourself? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I think I sound like a total idiot. Watch this. It's almost all in yellows and red here. At the University uh, of Pennsylvania, Dr. Andrew Newberg is looking for an explanation uh, for what most regard as unexplainable. Right I mean, it's not language. It's not regular language, at least, that would normally activate the frontal lobe. Newberg is exploring the relationship between faith and science, studying what happens in the brain during the deepest moments of faith. If we're really going to look at this very, very powerful force in human history of religion and spirituality, I think we really have to take a look at how that affects our brain, what's changing or turning on or turning off in our brain. They're going to go around very fast right now. They're going to scan He's his recently brain. published a study of Americans slowly, speaking in tongues. Remarkably, he discovered that what's happening to them neurologically looks a lot like what they say is happening to them spiritually. Let's make sure we got your whole head in there. We asked Pastor Jerry Stoltzfus to come to the university to have his brain scanned while he speaks in tongues. This way, we could see the experiment in action. I don't think faith is anything to be afraid of from science. Science validates faith, so bring it on, whatever the facts he said, are. He said, bring it on. on, let's go. Just go ahead and, and you can begin prayer. And First, he's told to pray in English. Father, I pray for each of the family members involved in this study. Grant them what they are looking for in their personal lives for their vision and their potential. Then he's told to speak in tongues. This is the first scan when he was in prayer, speaking in English. This is the second scan when he is praying in tongues. Pastor Stoltzfus's scan showed that his frontal lobe, the part of the brain that controls language, was active when he prayed in English, but for the most part it fell quiet when he prayed in tongues. When they're actually engaged in this whole very intense spiritual practice, religious practice for them, their frontal lobes tend to go down in activity, but I think it's very consistent with the kind of experience that they have because they say that they're not in charge. They're, it's the voice of God, it's the Spirit of God that's moving through them. Dr. Newberg says the results were even more dramatic on subjects who were scanned without a nightline crew in the room and who were not speaking in tongues on demand as Jerry Stoltzfus had done. <laughs> Study participants like Donna Morgan first listened to music, then went to where the spirit took them. She's having church, y'all. When I heard about the study, I already knew within my spirit that it was going to be proven that there's a part of our brain that we have no control, that when the Holy Ghost is interceding for us, we're out of control. In earlier studies, Dr. Newberg looked at what happens in the brains of Buddhist monks meditating and Franciscan nuns praying. And it was noticeably different from what happens to tongue speakers. So it's noticeably different. So if you guys aren't catching this, the part of the brain that, that processes language was not firing off when they were speaking in tongues. Say, showing it's the spirit praying, not the language. You're not thinking about it. And then he studied other religions, but the tongues were the only ones that had that effect. Really stark contrast to the people who are like the Buddhists and the Franciscan nuns who are in prayer because they are very intensely focused. And in those individuals, the frontal lobes actually increased activity. But Dr. Newberg isn't out to prove or disprove anything. He can tell you what happens in the brain, not why. Were you skeptical going into the studies? If by skeptical, the question is, is this a real phenomena, meaning that this is truly the voice of God speaking through them, that's a much more problematic question, I think, and something that I'm not sure 
that we've specifically answered simply by doing our study. But for those who believe, it doesn't matter if science can find the footprints of the Holy Spirit in their 21st century brain scans. When you've experienced this, you don't really care what anybody else thinks. It's personal for, in the first place. It is something between you and God. So we don't really care if it's validated or not, but it's fascinating when it is so that people that have thought we're crazy can have something to look at to say maybe we're not. That is amazing, guys. We are going to now... We're going to pray for you guys to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. So if you didn't catch it, the part of the brain that basically processes language was not firing off while they were speaking in tongues. Other religions, it was actually increasing during spiritual practice. With Christians speaking in tongues, a non-biased doctor says, yeah, it was working. The spirit was praying because the brain, how is a, how is a non-Christian unbiased doctor going to believe in it? say it's true but then we have some religious youtubers out here saying we're making it up how does that happen okay so isaiah biblically what do i need to do to receive the holy spirit okay number one there's four basic biblical steps number one is you need to repent acts 238 238 there's no way to get around it don't listen to anyone lying about this repentance is a must you definitely need to repent let me do this uh let's put this on a little bit of worship music here real low Okay, you need to repent. There's no getting around this. Repentance is necessary. Acts 2.38, you need to repent. Acts 17.30, the times of ignorance God overlooked, but now God requires all men everywhere to repent. So you need to repent before you receive the Holy Spirit. Number two, you need to ask for it. Luke 11.11, 11, how much, if you being evil give good gifts, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? So I repent. Lord, I repent of my sins. I turn. I'm not going to continue in this lifestyle. I ask for the Holy Spirit. Number three, I need to be thirsty. This is not for, please hear me. Those that are like, if God wants to give it to me, prove it. If God wants me to speak in tongues, make me then. No, ain't nobody got time for that. That's not, that's not what it's, that's not who it's for. That's why the people that say, if God wants me to have tongues, he'll give it to me. Don't get tongues. You need to be thirsty. John 7, 37. Anyone who is thirsty may come to me and drink. Out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. Verse 39, by this, he meant the Holy Spirit. Okay, so what do we have to be? Thirsty. We have to be thirsty. Lord, I'm thirsty. Guys, I'm dying of thirst tonight. As a deer longs for water, so my soul thirsts for you, oh God. I'm thirsty for God. I need God in my life. I'm thirsty. I want this. So you need to repent, ask. You should already be doing these things, by the way. Lord, I need, I want this. Please, Lord, I need this. Give this to me be thirsty and then number four last thing is you need to drink john 7 37 he said you may drink of me this is actively i have a can of water here a little bougie can of water i'm going to show you how to drink this okay the water is sitting on my desk it's right here on my desk i'm thirsty i've been preaching for an hour and 20 minutes i need that water okay i'm thirsty come on water jump in my mouth water come on you can do it i need you nothing happens what do I have to do? Grab the water, pick it up, and I need to drink. I had to grab the can and drink. So Jesus says, if you're thirsty, come to me and drink. Participate. Ask. Pursue. Earnestly, 1 Corinthians, earnestly desire spiritual gifts. There, you don't just sit and go, all right, Lord. You, I, Lord, I want to drink. I want to drink. I'm coming to your well. Tonight, we're coming to the well of living water. And we're drinking don't sit back saying why isn't the water jumping into my mouth i'm thirsty no i got i got to pick it up i got to participate i got to drink this thing i got to get involved i got to pursue i got to knock and the door will be open ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find so let's pray father right now again don't come in and say oh you're speaking in tongues i just did an hour and 20 minutes on why it's okay to speak in tongues in a prayer meeting this is a prayer meeting chat we already talked for an hour and 20 minutes we're not going to ask for an interpretation we are going to pray here's my best practical advice i can give you if you want to start praying in tongues tonight and you you want this okay don't pray in english just receive put your hands out like you're receiving a gift because it's a gift of the bible says the holy spirit's a gift hands out i'm just going to ask god i'm going to repent ask him ask him and then i want you just to receive it just sit there and receive it and then don't speak in english when you feel that rivers of living water bubbling up in you by faith 
Start speaking it out. Guys, I don't just sit here and randomly start prophesying. The Bible says that the, the prophet is in control of his spirit. And Paul said, take turns prophesying. It's not spontaneous. I know you're like, well, spontaneous. It's not. Tongues is not spontaneous. You don't just sit there and it just it comes out. The same way I have to open my mouth up and prophesy. I have to open my mouth up and speak it is the same way I have to start speaking in tongues by faith. So you're like, you can't just do it on demand. Yes, you can. The Bible says you can. It's by faith. You've been given this. So now, again, I already showed you in scripture. This is okay to do. Don't get all, oh, we're not teaching anymore. Hour and 20 minutes. Now we're going to pray. I'm going to pray for you. Don't speak English. I want you just to speak it out as you feel the spirit giving you. And then whenever you start speaking it out, speak it out for a while. Don't stop right away. I'm going to do it for a few minutes. Okay. I'm going to do it for a few minutes. And then I want you to type something in the chat if it's your first time tonight in the, in the chat. Okay. Remember tongues is a sign for the unbeliever. This is a sign here tonight. So father, I pray tonight over every single person in this broadcast that you would pour your Holy Spirit on them. Father, tonight we come, we repent of every sin known and unknown, Lord. We repent. We turn from our sin. And Father, we ask you tonight that you would give us the Holy Spirit. Lord, fill us with the Holy Spirit. God, we desperately need your Holy Spirit tonight. We desperately need your Holy Spirit tonight. Lord, baptize us in the Holy Spirit. We're praying tonight. Come on, chat, start praying. We're praying for the Holy Spirit tonight. We ask you, we come again. We're bugging the judge. We're asking tonight for the Holy Spirit. We ask you. So ask him. Keep asking him right there. You repented. I turned from my sin. I repent. I'm done with it. No more. Lord, I ask you. I ask you for the Holy Spirit. Fill me. I just wait a moment there. Fill me with the Holy Spirit, Lord. She not Fill me, Lord. If you feel it bubbling up, just begin to speak it out. And I'm going to start praying in tongues. And you're going to join in with me. And if you can pray in tongues... Notice I'm saying praying in tongues, not speaking in tongues. If you can pray in tongues, start praying for me here. I'm start, stop praying for me. Start praying with me. Well, you could pray for me too. All of you could pray for me, but start praying with me right now in tongues. No English. If you don't have it yet, you want it. No English. Just, Lord, I want this. I'm asking you. And just get ready for it to bubble out of your mouth and just start speaking out in faith. Start speaking out in faith. Okay. You got this. You got this. Fresh fire of the Holy Spirit. Fresh anointing. Rivers of living water, robo bo sata, hina robo sham di adamando bo san di araba kura ba shat adamando bo, hina raba sham da raba ba san di adamando bo robo shakande, hima robo sam di adamando bo sam di araba. Father, fill them tonight. Fill them out of their belly, rivers of living water, according to John seven. Shika raba sa, hima robo sham di araba sa. Jashan, I already showed you in scripture how everyone can pray in tongues. It's literally in the Bible. Rewind. Rewind. Everybody, Paul said, I want all of you to pray in tongues. Paul said, I want all of you to pray in tongues. Mark 16 says, if you believe, you will pray in other tongues. Why would God not want to pray out of you, brother? I don't understand. Why are you, why are you believing that God doesn't want to pray out of you? Come on, just pray it out. If you can pray in it, pray it out. Shapa sopo ko mandia da mando bo sandara tinda salama kandia shamba robo shagia mamba soko mandata himba robo shamba takanda santa yamba robo sam di adamando bo sham di araba yombo kandia sandara ba shamba robo shata kimbo sonta da mando ka yukan basanti yakandia raba shandara bo soro bo konda la basata Shimpa robo sham di adamando kondia sanda. Come on, break the unbelief. Don't stand in your way. It's not your thinking. It's not your intellect. It transcends intellect. You got to get out of your own way. This is by faith. We're praying the spirit. In our weakness, the spirit prays out of us. Shipa robo shandara bakuro bo kanda sandia. Himba robo. Father, I pray, touch them tonight, Lord. Fresh baptism, Lord. Fresh fire, God, on them tonight. Anoint them, God. Abasata. Himba robo sham da robo kanda da basun tiara mande. Himba robo sham da da baso ramba baba saka. Yamba shat tiara mando robo sham tiara mandara. Himba robo sham da da ba. Himka raba sa tanda basun tiara manda ta kanda sa. Yombo kum dia sam da da ba shi da da ba. Urobo shata kinda raba shando robo satiara. Kinda raba sham da ba basuka da mande. 
Thank you, Lord. Come on, chat. Just pray, 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 pray. Rabasata. Ki narabasho. Ki marabasha. By faith. Just pray it out. By faith. You're not going to make it up. If you're like, I don't want to make it up. You can't make up tongues. You can't make it up. If it's genuine, you ask for something genuine, you're not making it up. There's no way I can make that up if I wanted to try. Shamba robo. And if you've made fun of this in the past, repent of making fun of it. If you've made fun of people or made fun of tongues, ask for God to forgive you of that. Ask God to cleanse you and wash you. Repent of that. That's 100% a sin if you're making fun of tongues. Shima robo shata Come on, you got this chat. Thank you, Lord. Fill him with the Holy Spirit, Father. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Shaka nama sukura masha. Hino robo sham darabasi. Couple minutes here. Shando robo kunkanta. Yoko bandia sam darabashin darabasa. Father, right now, everyone in the chat. Come on, press in, press in. Shimba robo sham darabakandia sanda. Hamda robo shaka namasa. Tu sambi aramo bokunda sati aramoka. Amba robo sham darabasantia sham darabasi kindia. Touch him, Lord. I know some of you are like, this is weird. You're not used to it. Hey, this is the Holy Spirit praying out of us. Holy Spirit praying out of us. And maybe if you hate it, maybe you need deliverance. Maybe a demon's making you hate it. You shouldn't hate the Holy Spirit praying out of someone. Shapa Ramba. Amba dobo santi araba. Guys, keep your negative comments to yourself. You're just going to get timed out and muted. We have tons of mods, so don't even waste your time. Don't even waste your time. Just go somewhere else. If you're, if you're, if you're going to mock or make fun, there's a lot of people getting it tonight. Father, I pray, fill them. Fill them, Lord. If you need to give your life to Christ, now's the time to repent. Put your faith in Jesus. Turn to the cross. Put your faith in Christ. It's only by grace. It's only by faith. Put your faith in him. Put your faith in him. Turn to the cross. Repent of your sin tonight. If you need to get saved, tonight's your night to do it. Yeah, we command every unclean spirit hindering you to leave in Jesus' name. Every unclean spirit hindering you, every mocking spirit, we bind you and we command you to come out in Jesus' name. Every mocking, hindering, binding spirit, come out now in Jesus' name. Get out, Satan. You have no power. We're not afraid of you here. We don't shy away from confrontation. We confront every foul spirit that is in the way. Get out in Jesus' name. Every foul spirit in the way of this. Get out in Jesus' name. Come on, rivers of living water. Some of you are getting it for the first time. Pray it out. This will change your life. Lord, we pray bapti baptize them right now. Sham daraba. Colleen says you cannot receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit until you, until you believe. Absolutely, Colleen. This is not for unbelievers, chat. This is not for unbelievers. You need to be a believer to receive the Holy Spirit. Sham daraba. Han daraba. Satana mokundi daraba. Humble yourself, chat. If you're prideful, you're not going to get this. God gives grace to the humble, but humbles the proud. Someone said it worked, praying for the first time. Praise the Lord. We're not, listen, I got to keep going. I'm going to keep going until the Holy Spirit tells me. We're going to keep pressing here. Got it for the first time. Praise the Lord. Can you receive the Holy Spirit if you've never been baptized in water? Yes, 100%. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit before water. In Acts 10, they got baptized in the Holy Spirit before they got baptized in water. So it's biblical Acts 10. Undeniably, you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit before water. 
shaba robo shakanda basa himba robo shamda rabasa aba dobo sambi aramando bugu rabasha kamandi arama hamba robo kamba basanti aramando bo shamba di aramasa don't be down guys don't be discouraged just keep asking if you don't get it right now tonight keep asking don't be discouraged discouragement is not from god you've not done nothing wrong this is a gift we can't earn this some you're like oh i gotta earn it you can't earn this it's a gift if you're not getting it you haven't done something wrong just keep asking bug the judge thank you lord thank you jesus touch every person fill them with the holy spirit if you're in the room with someone and you've been baptized in the holy spirit and they haven't put your hand on them according to the book of acts chapter 19 you can lay your hands on them and they'll receive the holy spirit you can lay your hands on them right now if they if they're in the room and you are you are baptized and they haven't been baptized in the holy spirit lay your hand on them right now you're doing it praise the lord brother lots of people doing it listen if one person which more than one has already gotten gets it this was 100 percent worth it tonight 100 percent Thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost. Your, your tongues don't have to sound like mine. They're going to sound different, okay? It's not going to sound the same. Don't compare yours to mine. They're going to be different. This is amazing. I'm saying sounds I've never heard myself say before. Praise the Lord, sister. Praise the Lord. This is beautiful. What a beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing. Don't stop. Keep praying. Kino robo sampa rara makunda basha yondo robo shapa rari rara masukande yamba robo shanda rara basa. Thank you, Lord. Shimba robo shakanda rara. Hina rara basha kamando bo sandi rara ba. Shapa rara masuku rumbo tasa tinka nda basanti ashanda rara ba. Hina rara basuku ramasa. Thank you, Lord. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. I'm doing it. Praise the Lord, Courtney. Keep praying, Courtney. This is life changing. Don't stop. Keep praying. Someone says, I feel a heavy weight lifted. Praise the Lord. He's lifting weights tonight. Chat, he's lifting weights. If you're weighted down, if you're burdened, I feel a fresh fire tonight, guys. Even as I'm preaching, I feel a fresh fire tonight. Pray in the spirit. I'm telling you, changes things. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Thank you, Lord. You're beautiful. You're amazing, God. We worship you. We praise you, Lord. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our praise, God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, they're going to sound different. Don't compare it to mine. I'm just praying to encourage you guys and, and praying. If you've made fun of it, I would just repent. I would just repent if you've made fun of tongues. It's no joke. It's no game. Shapa robo samba di aramakuda satadamando shanda rabasa himba basu papa makandi arabasa. Thank you, Lord. Shakanda basu kuraba. Fill him with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Shi darabasa kamdera mande di asamba aramakura basa him darabasu kurumbo shak. Come on, a couple more minutes. A couple more minutes. Keep pressing. Shapa kunda siya nderemakundi asa tesamba bakunda. Fill him with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Fill him with the Holy Spirit tonight, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. For an interpretation, if you feel like you spoke a message, just ask, pray. Say, Lord, I pray you'd give me the interpretation. And then the Lord will give it to you and then speak it out. 
We command every unclean spirit to leave Alyssa's throat right now. Alyssa Gomez, we command every spirit out of your mouth into the abyss now. Let her go, Satan. Every spirit out of Alyssa Gomez right now. Loose her. Come out of her now. Madam, if you're confused, go watch the whole video. I explained for an hour and 20 minutes what we're doing tonight. So I know new people are confused jumping in. Just rewind, watch the teaching, and then you won't be confused. So it's no problem. I don't think you're making fun of me. I just, uh, you're going to have to watch the teaching because it won't make, it might not make sense if you're brand new jumping in here and not watching the teaching. Let Alyssa go now. Alyssa Gomez, be free now. Every spirit come out of her now in Jesus' name. Nate Valen, Vel, uh, what is that? Valenzuela, be free now. Valenzuela, Nate, be free now. Every spirit come out of him now in Jesus' name. Come out of him now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For every person watching, I pray you fill them. And guys, if you have to watch this back, you can watch this back as well. Um, we're going to do a prayer night soon where we're just going to pray in the Spirit. And we're going to pray in tongues. We're going to pray baptism and just flow in the Spirit soon here. We're going to be doing some prayer afternoons and prayer nights. It's working. I'm doing it. I'm crying and chill bumps. Praise the Lord, motorheads. Keep doing it, brother. Guys, this is so life-changing. I can't express enough how life-changing this is. This is so life-changing. Your life will never be the same. This is so incredible tonight. I'm telling you this every day. Pray 10, 20, 30 minutes as long as you can in, in the spirit. Man, it's so life-changing. Thank you, Lord. I felt something come out I didn't expect. Come on. Come on. Speak it out, top gen. Top genome, speak it out, brother. So many people in the chat saying the first time. If you just look at the screen, you'll see them. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory, all the praise. Roy said first time, praise the Lord. Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Jesus, you get all the glory. This is all about you. Thank you, Lord. She not about Alyssa Gomez just tonight. Put on some music. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. She not about Courtney, you're feeling sharp pains. It might be a, de a demonic spirit manifesting. You might need to seek some deliverance. Deliverancemap.com is our map where you can find deliverance. Deliverancemap.com. Thank you, Lord. Guys, I want to um give you guys a chance to sew because I can't stay on late tonight. I know I've been live an hour and a half. I do have a family emergency happening. I wasn't almost able to even be here uh, with one of my kids. So please be praying for my kids. I don't want to go into detail yet, but just be praying for my kids, please, for complete healing and wholeness. We're believing God for a miraculous healing in one of my kids. So we do have a family situation going on today. It's been going on for the last few days. I need to attend to. Uh, what an amazing night. I honestly didn't think I can go an hour and a half talking about tongues. I'm like, I can't do a whole live stream. I had a lot of more other stuff planned, but the Lord, I really believe, filled my mouth, gave me wisdom and revelation, and gave me the words. Because I, I legitimately thought I wasn't going to be able to do a full live stream on this. And I, it was necessary. It was needed. I'm glad we we're able to do this. And I believe that many of you are going to get this on the replay on Spotify. If you want to partner with our ministry, obviously tonight is free. All of our content is free. 1,500 videos for free. The only way we survive is by crowdfunding, meaning the, the crowd you guys give. And so, so if you want to give and so, you can give on the QR code. You can give on the screen. I'm going to be making a cash app soon. Tomorrow, we will be live with Bill Wees. I'm telling you guys, there's 2,600 of you on here right now total. Please come back tomorrow at 6 o'clock. This is one that you don't want to miss. If there's ever been a podcast you need to be in, it's tomorrow. You will get the fear of the Lord. You'll get, I'm telling you, you will get rocked tomorrow. I'm going to interview Bill Weiss. and going to share about how we went to hell for 23 minutes. And I'm going to ask him all the hard questions about, you know, why is God sending people to hell? And why the, everything is there burning people right now? Do we immediately go to hell? All the questions you guys want, I'm going to ask him tomorrow. And I'm going to interview him. It's going to be one you don't want to miss. I promise you, tomorrow live at 6 o'clock, get your unsafe friends and family. It is going to be so interesting. I promise you, your unsafe friends and family will not be bored. It is going to be so interesting. They're going to be glued. This is not one of these where it's like, oh, I'm bored. This is religious. No, this is a story that they need to hear. Tell your unsafe friends and family, come over tomorrow. I want you to hear this story. I want you to do that tomorrow. 
Tell your friends and family, I'll buy you dinner. Come over and watch this tomorrow. I promise you, if you get them there, they're going to be touched and they're going to hear a story that will change your life. I can guarantee that. I've heard, I've brought many people to hear this man. He's a good friend of mine. I'm just telling you right now, get your unsafe friends and family there, okay? All right, guys, partner with us. If you partner monthly, you will get 70 sermons, 20% off the merch store and all the past and partners calls and future partners calls. So there's the giving link. They're, they're pinned in the comments. All you gotta do is click the link and you can give. It means a lot and I'm not being cliche, it enables us to keep doing this. Also, I want to know how your guys' 90-day Bible is coming along, okay? How is your 90-day Bible? I have to do mine today, still tonight. I am on Judges chapter 5. We're doing the Bible in 90 days, Bible plan on the Uversion Bible app. Excuse me. Uh, the partner calls will be returning soon. The kids are back in school. Um, I have some stuff coming up right now I can't mention yet, but some family situations going on I need, we just need prayer for. So the Bible, the partner calls are on hold currently, but the partner calls will be coming back. So just pray about monthly partnering. If you're out there right now and you're like, hey, I have extra $20, $5, $100, whatever a month, I want to sow it into good ground because you're investing into us, guys. You're not just giving random money away. You're investing your money into the kingdom. If you sow your money sparingly, you'll reap it sparingly. That's what the Bible says. So it's good ground to sow into. Talk to your husband, wife. I wouldn't do it behind their back. Talk to your spouse. Hey, we want to sow into this ministry. What do you think about doing 50 a month, 20 a month? Let's partner with them. And you can do that on the website or YouTube. You can hit join. YouTube does take a percentage. So it's better to do it on the website. But you can scan the code and go to my website or isaiahsaldover.com slash partner. Talk to your spouse tonight. Hey, let's pray about doing this. Pray about it as well. Okay, well, we really appreciate that. And the bottom line is people partner and then cancel and then repartner and then it's a revolving door. So we're losing partners every day and then we're gaining partners. So just partner with us, okay? I'm gonna get off here soon because my I, I do gotta attend to, to my daughter here that's not well, but be praying for her, please, guys. Maybe I'll post something about it soon, but we're just waiting to hear back on some results here. Okay, my sister said, y'all don't hesitate to spend money on Starbucks, Netflix, Hulu, Disney. This is a subscription for the kingdom. Thank you, Cherish. And guys, go subscribe to my sister, Cherish Downey. Go subscribe. She's past 5,000 subs. Thank you guys for subbing. Go subscribe and watch her channel. Thank you, Jenny, for your prayers. Yeah, everybody be praying for my um, my daughter, my daughter, um, Journey. We do have some health issues going on. We're waiting back for some results, and we're also believing and waiting on the Lord for healing. We're waiting for doctor's results, and we're waiting on the Lord, and we're praying for healing daily over her and believing. But pray for my baby, Journey. She's going through some health issues right now, and we're just praying for a complete recovery and healing. It's just terrible watching your kid be in pain. It's, it's the worst thing. You guys all know there's nothing like it in the world. There's, it's terrible to watch your kid in pain. It feels so bad. All right, Warren and Donna, thank you. It's a great teaching. Thank you for this teaching on this important topic. And then Anonymous, thank you. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it tonight. That was an hour and a 40 minute teaching on speaking in tongues. I hope I brought clarity. I hope I brought those objections and cleared up some objections of, oh, this, this, this. And we just brought truth. And so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I pray you guys will give. I pray you guys will sow and partner so we can keep doing this full time. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. I'm going to go attend to my daughter and see what's going on. Otherwise, I would stay for 30, 40 minutes. But I, I got I got important things to do. Thank you for the Venmo, Elizabeth. I'll read the Venmos when I get off. You guys are amazing. All right. You guys are amazing. Pray for us. Pray for my daughter, Journey. And uh, God's going to work it out. We're believing for God's sovereign healing. We believe that our God heals. We know our God heals. We stand. We believe by faith. Thank you, Melanie Edwards, for the donation. She said, thank you for tonight. So great praying in tongues together. It was Holy Spirit fire. Thank you, Melanie. And we're going to be doing this more. I don't care what people think. If you guys are like, oh, what about, I don't care. If you haven't caught that yet and you're new to the channel, go watch my other videos. You're going to come to find you cannot be a people pleaser and a God chaser at the same time. They're going to make videos. The bigger our page gets, the more videos they're going to make. I can care less. I don't care. So we're going to pray in tongues. We're going to do prayer nights. It doesn't matter to me. I got to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. They can keep making their videos. They can keep sitting in their office not going out, not praying for anybody, not being spiritual. They could do it. I don't care. I don't even watch them anymore. It's a waste of time, energy, thought. You don't even have to tell me. Someone made a video about you. Cool. Tomorrow's Tuesday. Okay. Doesn't matter to me. We're going to keep going. I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. All the links to give are in the description and the chat. We'll see you guys in the next video. God bless. Love you guys. Bye. We're going to do a quick ending screen tonight because I got to go. Okay. Love you guys. Oh, hey.
didn't see you or just chilling down there listening if this if you've enjoyed this video go ahead and hit the like button super easy super free helps a lot all right so right now stop what you're doing hit like okay i'm going back down here bye this world is in denial I love you guys. I probably won't let the whole song play because uh, I got to get off. So I love you guys so much. God bless. This is Come Out in Jesus' Name by Jeffrey Jocelyn. And that's never going to change. Let every tongue confess that Jesus is the king. And one accord we're moving forward. Break every chain. Love you guys. Have a good night. Demons start to tremble. Devils go insane. Love you guys. So let the fire begin. start to tremble. Devils go insane. The feel of flames get hotter as they try to run away. They can try to lie, but they're out of time when they hear the saints proclaim. Every young clean spirit must come out in Jesus' name. All right, I'm out of here, guys. Love you. Have a good night. Goodbye. See you guys tomorrow at 6 p.m. Keep reading your 98 Bible challenge. Love you guys. Good night. Bye.